Welcome to our next webinar here at uh, JFT Brokers. Welcome in my name, Stefan Friedrichowski, and of course in the name of JFT Brokers as well. Um, it's a pleasure for me to have you all here. Um, today, the 28th uh, of uh, June 2018, 7 o'clock. Um, yeah, as always, at least uh, German time, 7 o'clock, wherever you are. Having webinars in these days is always a little bit tricky. It's a little bit like um, talking between the matches. Um, as you may know, um, yesterday was even more uh, difficult for me because, uh, yeah, just after uh, Germany went out of the game, um, an hour later, uh, I have had my German webinar uh, about the same topic. But today, it's uh, for me much more pleasure because my second favorite uh, won the game and that has been Colombia. So they are um, um, even on top of their group. So that's fine for me because I'm really a fan of uh, that country. So uh, yeah, that's quite well. Um, but uh, of course, in general, we don't talk here about football. Uh, we talk about trading and the title already for today is trading the right setup at the right time and i have a little bit to apologize uh, that i made a mistake in in, in the sequence of uh, webinars because today we do the a little bit more advanced one and in two weeks from now uh, the one which should be before the one from today uh, the, that should be the introduction um, because today it's a little bit more tricky so if you are within the same webinar in two weeks, uh, you will get some additional basics. Um, but I can't change the order um, because then I would not talk about what is announced. So, and unfortunately, it was simply my mistake. Um, I went through my list of webinars and uh, yeah, I have chosen this, the wrong one. But anyhow, trading the right setup at the right time. There are two aspects of that kind of trading strategy for today. One will be what we have had already at daily seasonals. And we have had only one daily seasonal at that point in time. And that was a DAX day of week seasonal. And, you know, we have some very good records about that kind of trading strategy working well, even working well uh, for JFD Wells. Um, so everything is fine. The next step is, of course, hey, adopt that kind of strategy to other underlyings like Forex or even under indices or maybe um, oil or um, future, Bund future or any other underlying. And of course, we will do it and that we will do in two weeks. And then we will do something similar with on, on a daily base. Today, we have even one point more and that is trading at the right time. So it's not only a question of the day of the week for today, because we, we deal with H1 data, we ask an additional question, what is the right time to open a trade? And finally, to close. And close will be always before uh, we encounter swaps. So um, that will be a completely intraday trading strategy. So it's a mixture between days and daily seasonals and to have the right time during the day. So that is what we go for today. As you know, uh, you see already my email address here. Later, um, I will have a couple of Excel sheets. And if you have interest in those Excel sheets, just uh, send me an email here to s.friedrichowski at jvtbrokers.com. And then I will make sure that you get those <clears throat> Excel sheets. Um, it will be a link um, to a Dropbox uh, because the Excel, Excel sheets are quite heavy. I mean, it's uh, more than uh, 30 megabytes uh, per, per sheet. Um, but anyhow, um, I, I'm willing to share those uh, Excel sheets with you. Then you can do your own exercises with uh, similar setups. Uh, quite easy uh, because you just have to exchange um, historical data and uh, the other remark uh, as always uh, you know the slides are already uploaded so you may download slides from today's webinar already now uh, via you go to webinar control panel okay 
And as always, you know that uh, the webinar is recorded and you will find the recordings on the JFD YouTube channel and all the other webinars of um, the past months. I have to mention the, our risk disclaimer because we, we go for absolutely specific um, trading setups today and uh, you may yeah, adapt those or even copy those trading setups for your own trading activities. But as always, if you do so, uh, you do it for your own and on your own um, responsibility. I have always to say that once during the webinar, so therefore I have to repeat myself. So the starting point for today's webinar it's not really right that it has been the Friday gold rush uh, under that name. Name it runs uh, for um, well at Andre Stagge. Um, it's a little bit older than the last webinar from him, but he has this, this, the same kind of strategy on his web page as well, and we will look to that uh, in a minute. And it's about gold, and um, the observation has been. That's a good thing to go long on Friday for gold. Sounds easy. So you open uh, maybe already at uh, Tuesday, uh, Thursday um, evening or um, very early in the morning uh, on, on Friday. You open a gold long trade and um, you, know, you sell at the end of the day or even on the very beginning on, on Monday. And that's all. And that's already profitable. So that's kind of seasonal because we are talking about a specific day of the week, Friday, and we have a certain direction, long. And that's all. So that kind of filter is really um, quite easy. But it's the starting point for the, those kind of um, trading ideas. But then we will do what I call a general generalization of that kind of idea. So whenever we want to investigate any underlying, we do it separately for specific days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, and so on, separately for potential long trades or short trades. And then, because we do this today, even on H1 base, we ask, hey, is it good to open the trade at one o'clock or is it good to open the trade at eight o'clock and when to close latest that kind of trade already at 3 p.m. or 6 p.m. or nearly at the end of the day? And as always, um, I only try always here to present strategies which have a stop loss. Um, of course, we have to talk about stop loss setting. So how far away we should set our stop loss? Having done that, we will find out hmm, one additional filter might be helpful as well. And that is a simple EMA filter. So we will distinguish between certain configurations. And if we do something like that for really a couple of underlying, and in my case, uh, it will be 29 underlyings, so 28 forex pairs um, plus gold then we can create a complete portfolio with one basic idea and then look for um, a combined equity, which is um, yeah, quite impressive, I think. And you will see. Good. So the Friday gold rush. So Friday, it's time to trade gold long. That's the statement. And uh, you, you find, um, and if you download the slides, then you have uh, automatically that link here uh, as well. Um, you find that link uh, on, on the web page of uh, Andre Stagge. Uh, sorry, it's in German, and I think we cannot switch here the language. But anyhow, um, at least the title of the strategy is in English. And you may, maybe you can follow a few words in German. But anyhow, and then you see exactly that kind of picture and the idea behind. Uh, I only mention the website because you find a couple of other strategies here uh, as well. Um, Bitcoin beauty and so on and so forth. So um, quite interesting. Maybe uh, if you have some time, you can have a look, a closer look there as well. And the picture I took exactly from his web page. And the statement is Friday has an edge. It has a long edge. And that means if you would trade that 
simple idea, and in this case, um, um, Andre is trading the strategy even without a stop loss. Yeah, it's profitable. I mean, it's, it's not a, a, a money printing machine, but uh, it works. It works already for nearly 20 years. So mm, it's not a bad idea to have that as a base for any other strategy. But of course, we want to generalize that kind of idea. And that's quite important that we, 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 we um, you will learn a little bit about, about the methodology of how to create trading strategies within that webinar as well. And um, if you are uh, more frequent within those webinars, <clears throat> you know that that is my opinion that I, or um, at least my attitude to say I don't only want to present trading strategies. I want to have you looking behind the scene that you know how those things can be derived and how you may do same stuff by your own. And in this case, we have to investigate the weekdays or the day of the week, I'm not sure what is the right English word, um, <clears throat> separately. So we have five different situations. In principle, we might even go for Sunday, um, because at least at uh, JFD Brokers, we have one hour <laughs> uh, at Sunday. Um, but honestly, um, since um, I'm not that interested in that one hour on Sunday. Uh, I uh, don't uh, have a look on, on that one hour Sunday. So for only five days of the week. And on the other hand, we always can go long or short. So we have already 10 configurations um, because we have to do everything separately. Um, and I can announce already that I have done everything. Um, and. I will give you the final results as well. So you finally, you will get an Excel sheet for each underlying uh, when to trade uh, on what day of the week and on what times. So, but anyhow, you will see how we can um, derive uh, such a trading strategy. If you have those 10 independent configurations, then we have still a couple of degrees of freedom. The one degree of freedom is when to open the trade. Nobody forces us to open the trade at, at midnight or at one o'clock or two o'clock. Hmm, maybe it's a much better idea to open the trade at 8 a.m. or even later. So the time of the open of the trade is one degree of freedom. And we do it in one hour steps because I will use one hour um, um, historical H1 data. The other question is when to close a trade. Okay, we will have, of course, a stop loss. So maybe uh, we, we, the trade is already closed by stop loss, but we need a final closing time. So, because I don't want to create here trades which are more or less endless, and I want to avoid swap costs. And therefore, we, we will set up an exit time for the trade, a forced time close for that trade. Um, that time might not necessarily be um, at uh, close to 11 before swap costs. Hmm, maybe it's uh, already at, at uh, 6 p.m. Of course, we have that stop loss in percentage here. Or that is the kind of uh, way we will calculate stop losses. And finally, the Excel sheets are already prepared to have take profit as well. But I will present all the strategies without any take profit. Without any take profit means, um, so the trade has only two conditions how the trade might be closed. One, reaching stop loss. Second, time close. So that specific time of the day that we close the trade and nothing else might close that trade. You may think, mm, I, I think it's better to have a take profit as well. No problem. Um, you, you can try out uh, with uh, take profit uh, within those Excel sheets. Let me go a little bit more practically and uh, let me open here um, an MT4 terminal uh, so that we, we get a feeling of what and how does it look if we go for such a strategy? And um, let's do it here um, 
just um, for one chart. Uh, let's go here for a British pound, uh, a Euro British pound, and uh, let me switch to H1. Um, don't look to the trades because those uh, have totally different um, uh, background. And now let me just illustrate how it might work. Yesterday, okay, yesterday was Wednesday, and maybe we know for that specific strategy um, that it is quite well that we open at 9 a.m. a trade. So therefore, I do a dotted line here in blue for a nine. So, and then we would open the trade strictly at the open at nine. So it would be exactly here. And maybe we have a short strategy and that short strategy should be closed uh, finally at uh, eight o'clock. Okay, so that would be here. And you see already that I pick here just as a basic example, something which is profitable, profitable but um, we do everything statistically and it just for a single day. So just for one Wednesday, that is yesterday, and one direction to investigate whether it would be good to go long or short on Wednesday and whether it's really right to have it at nine o'clock open and at nine o'clock close. When I talk, let me make already here the remark. When I say, okay, the nine o'clock uh, p.m. candle, we close the trade. That means that we close the trade at 9.59 because I always label the candles with the open time of that candle. But when we close that trade, we will close it at the very end of the 9 p.m. candle. And that is... Um, nearly 10 p.m., so 9.59, um, so to say. So if the rules would be open 9, close 9, we would have a, a trade from um, here to here. Okay, indeed, a nice trade. And we might have had a stop loss, which, uh, uh, which is somewhere, let's say, here. And we would have earned money. Great, but that's the basic idea. The only thing is to find the right times of the day for the specific weekday and the right direction, long or short. As we know already from gold that we could have even a more easy strategy like going for the complete day. Okay, that's one thing, and we will do that in more detail in two weeks. And once again, I have to apologize because uh, didactically it would be the, 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 um, the other order would be better, but mm, it is as it is. So that's the basic idea. So we can directly jump into um, Excel sheets in order to investigate that kind of strategy. By the way, if somebody is already looking to um, to his uh, uh, watch, um, I will make sure that we uh, stop the webinar before the next football game will be there. I'm not sure might be that we have english guys here as well yeah looks a little bit from the names um but anyhow so because today we have uh england against uh, belgium um but the good thing is uh, they only play um who's the top in the group uh, and both i think have already uh, the ticket for the next one good um no that's the wrong one uh we go for because i wanted to, to to start with something and play around with that excel sheet um i will start with an excel sheet which has data only from uh since 2017 so one and a half year and then i will switch later to an excel sheet with uh, more than 10 years uh, data history by the way, data history, uh, those data I download from uh, Dukas copy. Uh, and the good thing is, because when we talk about times, oh, there might be another question um, for what time zone I'm talking about. And okay, that I talk about the German time zone, uh, maybe it's obvious, but um, you may live in other countries with other time zones, and you might, um, yeah, if you strictly want to take my my results here then you have always to think okay that's german time um but um 
um, you may do it uh, in your own time zone as well. And you can, um, at, at Dukas Copy, when you download the data, you can say, okay, I want uh, the time zone to be Greenwich time without summer and winter time, then it's called the UTC time. Um, or you can say local, then you download the data exactly for your, your time zone uh, where your computer is uh, right now. Uh, so somehow they, they, they get the knowledge uh, straight out of your IP address um, and they know where you are. Um, it must be something like that. But anyhow, so um, my times here is always um, Middle Eastern uh, time and it's always summer winter time adjusted. Um, so Right now we have here a time of three o'clock. That means, really means three o'clock in the morning. Anyhow, whether we have winter or summer, three, nothing else. Let me quickly, a little bit, some details about the Excel sheet, um, and, and that you 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 know the logic behind. Um, not with every detail you you can find out by yourself, but that you know a little bit how that's created. Of course, here we here we have. Um, uh, the historical data, date, time, open, high, low, close. That's uh, quite easy. And then, of course, we have to know the day of the week. Um, <clears throat> and the good thing is there's an Excel function which is um, telling you the day of the week. And then you get numbers between um, 1 and 7. Um, yeah. I think it was one and seven. I have to look to another Excel sheet. Uh, no, uh, yeah, it's between one and seven. Yeah, that's right. Let me pick up this here and uh, put it here as well. Uh, so that we have the table. The bad thing is that that kind of logic is only at Excel. Um, it's not the standard logic. Normally Monday is a one and um, Friday is a five, but within Excel, it's uh, like this one here. Okay, we have uh, the day of the week. Um, we because we want to separately investigate the different days of the week, and then of course we want to know should we state uh, try to to start a trade, and therefore you can change the time here. Uh, and in this case, right now the time is at three, um, and then you can choose at which time of the day the trade should be closed if it has not reached a stop loss until then. And that's the next yellow field here. And you can change the numbers um, and then always, and I will do some changes in a minute, and then you will always get here um, a new equity curve, which is not pretty right now, but uh, we will get better ones. And yeah, of course, you can change um, trade direction. So that means you might go right now, we, we have always on. Tuesdays. Let me summarize here. We go on Tuesdays at three o'clock. We go long. We close the trade latest at 6 p.m. So finally it would be 6.59. We go long and we go with a stop loss of 0.5%. That's all. And then we get exactly that kind of equity. Okay. Not looking that good. You see some some uh, figures about this kind of strategy. We have had the same kind of figures, key figures for trading strategies, and uh, there we will not go into the details. But what we uh, what I uh, just want to summarize here is, I want to minimize what is here called opti. Uh, the lower that number, the better the strategy. But let's now play around a little bit with that kind of strategy. So we we might go, just that, that you see, we might go here for um, a long strategy and let me make it so everybody sees the complete picture here. Um, and let me just remark that a long and a short strategy are not necessarily symmetric. So there's a break of symmetry um, always with, when it comes to trading. And there are two reasons why there's a break of symmetry. One break are the spreads, because we have always to pay spreads, regarding less in which direction we do the trade. That is one break of symmetry. And the other break of symmetry is the stop loss. Um, so only if we would have no stop loss and no spreads, um, all trading strategies would be symmetric um, with respect to the decision of long or short. 
so that's the reason why um, they are a little bit symmetric, but not completely. Okay, we learned already going long, we should go for other weekdays and especially for Friday. But let me switch a little bit here. So and now we have the same strategy for Wednesday. Now we have the same strategy for Thursday. And now we have the same strategy for Friday. You see how easy? The only thing is we have to change some of those um, yellow uh, underlined uh, numbers uh, and you always get a new strategy. And let me do the final switch here from Thursday to Friday and then you see, okay, this Opti is already now at 900 something and before um, it was really not good. Okay, but anyhow, we have uh, here um, already achieved something like that. But maybe it's not that good to open the trade at three and to close all the trades at six. And maybe we should go for higher, um, stop loss distances okay that would have already um it's already an increase of performance and in numbers just it's always one thing to to look to the equity as a picture but in numbers it's uh, really getting better so i go back to the 0.1 uh, 0.5% and the opti um goes down from from 950 um, already to uh, 300 or something so it's already getting better and better Okay, let me change a little bit more. Let me go for maybe at, already at two o'clock we open uh, the trade. Okay, it's already getting even more better. Um, and now we um, are at one o'clock, it's getting better and better. And finally, maybe we go already at midnight. Oh, even better. So you see just by, by going for slightly other numbers of open time and close time, which will be my next step, um, we get a more and more improved equity. Fine. Um, let me go here to, to later numbers like um, seven o'clock and even once again better. So Opti is already at um, close to 120 and um, eight o'clock, eight o'clock, it's getting better. Let me go later nine o'clock whoops it's getting worse um so let me step one step further it's even getting even worse so it's not that good to wait until the very end of friday so we should close already at eight okay good observation so um to to close um, a little bit earlier it's not that bad. And now the equity more and more, I think, looks like should be my account. Going north, drawdowns, not that huge, quite well. Um, and But we haven't touched up, up to now the stop loss, so we can uh, change the stop loss here as well. Maybe 1.5% doesn't change anything. 1.7%, uh, mm, it's only a minor change. So anyhow, so it uh, really uh, gets a huge improvement, but still we have only da uh, the data here for one and a half year, but not that bad. Now we have one single strategy, Friday, gold, long, one would open the trade already at midnight, close the trade at 8 p.m., which would be finally 8.59. It will be a long trade only, and we go with a stop loss of 1.7%. And the equity here is um, in R, so in units of risk. Not that bad. So why not looking for other underlyings, or let's go step by step. First, let's go for um, increase of data. So this is only a back test of uh, one and a half year. Let me switch the, the, the data to a long, much longer history. And uh, maybe just a remark of all you have to do is if you go from one underlying to another underlying, you exchange the, the history data here. And please do not forget to change that red labeled uh, 
uh, entry here, the spread. Because if you would go for uh, investigation of Euro, US dollar, and you would go with a spread of 0.2, it would be dramatic. You will never see any profitable trade, uh, of course, because the spread is uh, much uh, lower. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it's a more number like um, 0.001 um, and not 0.2. So don't forget to change the spread. And now let's have a look to a longer history uh, and uh, that we will do here. Okay, still not bad. Um, I mean, maybe it's the wrong naming. No, it's really looking like a quite well strategy. Of course, our opti is uh, getting higher now because we have a much longer history and it's hard to have um, uh, still numbers in the way or in the range of 100 for opti. And it's only possible for uh, a small, uh, short period of time. But now we have 700. 745 trades in our history. So it's not the bad statistic. And um, you, you see how it works. Our win rate is not that huge. It's close to 60%. And on the other hand, you know that win rate as a single number doesn't tell you anything. Uh, it only tells you something if in combination with average profit and average loss. But anyhow, you see the final equity. Looks good, but might be better. If you looked for that kind of equity, um, we we would have in mind that, for example, that long drawdown. We have the longest and steepest one here, 10R about drawdown, um, and it took more than a year. And the time for recovery after that drawdown is even um, more close to two years that's a long time and we have had those drawdowns here as well here as well and maybe not that pronounced here so hmm, if you would really go on with that kind of strategy after um after having that kind of drawdown it's questionable so maybe we can improve the strategy and improving strategy might be the idea just as the duck stay a week. What about an EMA? Should we go always long on Friday? Should it be even better to compare with a, um, a relatively to an EMA? Whether we should really go long on every Friday? Maybe we would, should simply say, hmm, this Friday? No because of a certain configuration against a specific EMA. And you might realize already my, my wording that I'm not that straight in saying we go only long if we are above a certain EMA. Because that kind of sentence might be already a selection which is not the best. So let me tell you a little bit more in detail what I mean when I say there might be certain configurations of uh, what we should and will do um, with respect to, to any specific EMA. I have to wait a little bit because now you see I have opened um, in total four um, huge Excel sheets and sometimes uh, the computer is just saving them um, and then um, it takes the time. Um, and now I switch back to my slides and hopefully I will see them in a, in a minute. But having that kind of filter might be a good idea. And that kind of fine tuning um, opens in total eight possibilities of how to trade that kind of strategy. I repeat myself, intuitively, we would say long trade only if the price is above a, sp a specific EMA. Yes, I agree. But nobody tells us that that kind of story has any meaning or any truth in it. Nothing. Nobody. 
So the complete story is a little bit more complex or opens us eight possibilities. Of course, we would go long if we have a certain selection. We have a long strategy and the open minus that EMA value is positive, then we should trade. But we might even do exactly the reverse. So prices above the EMA and we should go short. And that is what I call reversal. And now you see what I mean within that table. So we open a short trade if we are above the EMA. So the difference open minus EMA is still positive. And if that reversal flag is set, yes, then we open that short trade. So we do a little bit like just the opposite of our um, what, what I stated here intuitively. But since um, it must not necessarily be wrong, that statement long only if we are above the EMA, uh, why not should we should go for the exact reverse? So you see that kind of reversal flag and that is simply, I, I use that, that, that um, the wording uh, because later in the Excel sheet, we will have just one single number and that is plus or minus one, uh, which means, do we have a reversal day? Yes or no. And do we have a reversal strategy with respect to the price relatively to the EMA? It's exactly that number, plus or minus one. Finally, that means that there are specific days we should not trade. If reversal flag is one and we have a long strategy and the price is below the EMA, we would not trade. So no trade. So that's the kind of logic. And here's another contest. I have a certain situation here and you might answer the question here um, within the go to webinar uh, control panel. So. I have a long strategy, the reversal flag is set, and we have that kind of situation here. Later we might learn at 8 o'clock we should open the trade. And therefore um, I, I marked that open, the horizontal line, I marked the 8 o'clock, and now you can see hmm, how the open of that candle is relative to the EMA. And now, we have a long strategy and the reversal flag is set. Question, should we trade? Should we open a long trade? Yes or no? Okay, I see already first answers here and um, all of them, by the way, are right. Um, the answer is yes. That's exactly the situation for a long trade in a reversal situation. Now we should open that trade. That's right. So, um, you see, once again, we have a couple of combinations. On average, that kind of EMA filter filters out half of all potential trades because half of the time we are above and half of the time we are below an EMA, at least for most of all underlyings. If we not talk about um, indices like uh, S&P 500 or DAX, then yeah, more or less it's 50-50. Um, and so, we half the number of trades, but we double the number of strategies because we have that reversal flag being one or minus one. So let me go back to the Excel sheet and then you see uh, what kind of effect uh, that has. That's already the final Excel sheet. It's um, long data history. So it's uh, starting at uh, 2004 and um, if you remember what uh, opti we have had without an EMA, um, we we went down from 800 to 500 here. And now we have the final configuration. We use an EMA of 300 on a daily chart. We trade on Fridays. We open already the trade a little bit earlier uh, at 2 o'clock. We close the trade at 9. Of course, it's a long trade and we will set a stop loss close to 1%. And that is now an even better strategy than the one before. Why is that strategy better in total? 
and because it has um, smaller drawdowns. Um, still, we don't have that huge slope since 2012, but time will come. Um, and uh, the reason why we don't, we even don't have that many trades since 2012. And if you have in mind the gold chart, um, the long term gold chart, then you know exactly why. Because um, since 2012, uh, we are not that often um, above the EMA. And, but that's okay. We have had a, a steep um, drawback from from within the gold price and then still trading Friday gold long might be not the best idea. So that kind of EMA filtering is, let's call it, it's protecting us. It's from time to time we stay out and we don't trade. So why not? It's okay. You know that we do not only have gold, we have um, the the universe of, of underlyings is quite huge. So we, we can go for other kind of underlyings as well. And of course that we will do. You can do it by your own, simply putting new data here and then um, try out what kind of um, parameters to be set here. And you have to do it always for long trades, for short trades, uh, independently, and then for reversal or not reversal. Everything can be set here by those numbers. Now I go here for a reversal strategy with a minus one. Um, and yeah, you see, it's not the best one. But anyhow, just as an example, one other um, underlying. Um, British pound, Japanese yen. Oh, where's the equity? Here's the equity. OK. We have quite a low number for Opti. Brilliant. We have a complete other kind of situation here. Still, we have a Friday strategy because um, we filter for day six. But now we have a short strategy. So that configuration is telling you on Fridays, we open a short trade if we are below an EMA 47 and we apply a stop loss, a stop loss of about 1.7%. And you see the result of that equity. It's even better than the gold Friday gold uh, long trade. It's much better, by the way. Um, and what's indeed quite well here, we have a long time, um, a good slope. Then we have a step here. <clears throat> And you might know what that kind of step has been. And um, it's quite easy, the story. That was a Brexit decision. And still after the Brexit decision here, um, we, we have still a slope to the north. That's excellent. And you see, we have a 14-year history data base here. And it's a single strategy with that kind of performance. That's quite well. And if you do so for a couple of underlyings, um, which I have done, um, we have done this one. Uh, um, don't worry, I will show you that uh, the Excel sheet uh, in a minute. You will have um, about 100 individual strategies. And for each line, uh, and I show it, but I want to, to, to label and mention it uh, here before. Uh, I have investigated all those underlyings, all those configurations of EMAs and times. Um, I have not done this by Excel. Uh, I have done it with my self-written C uh, code. And uh, then uh, the filtering has been done automatically. And what you finally see here is uh, are the best uh, strategies uh, for those underlyings. So you will not have on every day for every underlying a strategy, but there are enough. The table will show you the underlying itself, the stop loss setting, meaning the percentage value where to set the stop loss, um, the EMA period for um, getting the right uh, EMA value, the open time of the trade, 
of course, the exit time, the latest exit time for that trade, um, which finally means at the end of that H1 candle. And in a minute, you will see that now the labeling is done a little bit different. My, my times, like open time and close time, are not directly written in, in something like 3 p.m., 2 p.m., or, or 1 a.m. No, it will be in minutes after midnight. That has um, computational reasons because then it's easier to, to calculate with times. And so I have minutes after midnight and you only have to divide that number by 60. Then you have um, the normal um, time scale. Then of course, a day of the week, and um, I forgot to mention the reversal flag, but one attention here. Now everything is labeled as always when it comes to computer. The so one is a Monday and the five is a Friday. So in detail, that table, which has all the, the uh, strategies, um, finally it has that kind of equity. Um, oh, okay, let's talk first about the equity. Um, Okay, it's not performing in the very history, um, in the very past, not that extremely good, but, but let me describe what the final numbers are here. In this case, all the trades within that table are trades um, in euro, and the risk per trade here is simply 100 euro. And if you would have a 30,000 euro account um, and you would trade that kind of strategy, on average, you would gain 4% a month, which is really a lot. Um, and you see that kind of equity is really looking good. Um, the drawdowns here are really small, so it's really nice. And the, you find all the parameters here in detail, like already mentioned in um, in my slide. So you have a specific underlying. Let's go for the first line here, British pound, Japanese yen. And what you see here is exactly the, the, the one we have had in the other Excel sheet as well. And OK, it's um, a, a short strategy because long short is minus one, which means it's a short strategy. At day of week is five, which is now Friday. An EMA period of 47. And um, and so on and so forth. Open time 240, 240 divided by 60 is exactly that uh, 4 uh, a.m. and so on and so forth. Stop loss 1.7 percent. You see everything here, and as you see even more for that individual strategy, we have a certain drawdown in euro. Now everything is calculated in euro, and you will find a little bit other opti values here because. The kind of calculation is done a little bit different uh, for those numbers but anyhow you see even how many lots are traded uh, and so on and so forth let me illustrate here something which i think is interesting as well because we have here uh, 107 strategies and what you might do is you might sort them um, per day um, so that's column n and then we have all the strategies in the sequence of, of, of days. You see up to here, so the first 23 strategies are Monday strategies. So every day you can you, you can pick up uh, one or um, you can may even use <clears throat> that kind of, of formalism here to have an edge for that specific day for your own discretionary trading activities. No problem. You see what works and what does not work that well. That's one thing. But let me just make a chart out of um, the day of the week number um, and uh, go. Uh, sorry, I have to finish that one here uh, to have that kind of chart. And now we have it here. And now you see here the first 23 strategies are uh, Monday strategies. And you see um, the only thing I want to, to, to comment here is that we have quite less strategies on Tuesday and on Wednesdays. That's interesting. So most of our strategies are on Monday, Thursday, and Friday. Or in other words, Tuesday and Wednesday are not the best trading days. And that might even have a more 
a real deep story behind. I cannot really tell that kind of story, but um, you know that, that I'm looking a, more from, from a little bit more from a mathematical point of view. For me, it looks like hmm, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are too much random. We don't find that good systematic, and therefore we have less uh, strategies for those two days. So that's my first time um, explanation here. I'm not sure whether that's right. Um, it's not really related to news because looking from from news perspective, okay, we know um, whenever we, uh, we have uh, FED decisions, um, they are on Wednesdays. And uh, if we have um, um, EZB decisions, they are on Thursdays or vice versa. Oh, sorry, forgot. And on Friday, we have that non pharma payroll data. Um, so it's not really related to news and that we don't have any news on, on, on Tuesday. That's not the right story. Anyhow, I don't know the story. I, I even, even don't care about the final story behind. I know we have a systematic finally here and that is telling me the right strategy for any underlying. And for example, we have strategies here uh, even for gold on Tuesday. Why not? Uh, why not going for a strategy like this one here? Um, and um, you have a little bit more time to open your trades because now we start, uh, no, in this case, it's uh, five o'clock in the morning. There might be another filter here that you say, okay, I don't want to have trades uh, running before 6 a.m. So forget all, all the strategies here with open trades of um, before uh, 6 o'clock. No problem. Just filter for the time and then select the one you want to have. That we can do really well with that kind of strategy. I think it's already illustrated with that kind of portfolio here, uh, trading absolutely all. Um, and of course, uh, I'm in preparation to have that kind of strategy um, to be um, um, traded by an expert advisor. But anyhow, and then, then we can have uh, it full, fully automatic. So it's quite interesting thing to have that day of week filtering combined with specific trading hours combined with an EMA. And then we have something like this. Not that bad. And that, and I promised that I want to finish the webinar really before um, eight, so everybody could go for um, Belgium against um, UK, if you want. And yeah, in a nutshell, to have such an edge, looking to the daily seasonal combined with um, the, the trading hours is always good. To have an edge for trading, that's a driver for profitable trade activities. And that is proved here once again. Trading without an edge is more or less always a disaster. Trading with an edge can help us. And to identify those edges, that's what we do here. What we do exactly within those webinars, what we prove with those Excel sheets, for example, or a little bit more sophisticated with those um, um, C programs. But anyhow, we identify an edge, we prove that edge, and we transfer that edge to profitable trades. And that's what we are really uh, are looking for here. So that's nice. And um, what we found out here is that if you use one additional filter like that EMA, we can even um, have better results than without that EMA. And we have a very good portfolio with lots of trades <clears throat> um, because we finally go for all the 29 underlyings here. So 28 Forex pairs and um, gold. By the way, those 28 is just um, all possible combinations of Forex pairs um, out of Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, Euro, British pound, New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen, and US dollar. Uh, so those um, seven currencies, if you do the combination step, then you get those 28 Forex pairs. So that's the story behind that. So I hope you enjoyed webinar, this webinar as well. <clears throat> See you again, hopefully in two weeks. Then we go 
one step back to daily trades, not for specific hours. We go for daily trading activities. Um, and uh, yeah, it will be the step before this one here. Um, but anyhow, it's profitable as well. And it's even more easy to be realized. Let's see. If you have any comments or you have interest in those Excel sheets, um, keep in mind that uh, email address here, s.fredrichowski at jfdbrokers.com. And um, I will send you, send you the link because the Excel sheets itself, they are, uh, they are not suitable for any email uh, with those uh, 30 megabytes. But uh, I have a Dropbox link for all those Excel sheets and slides and uh, you can have them. Okay. That's for now. Let's go for football, if you like, or do whatever you like. Bye-bye.